大爆炸理论已成为广为接受的宇宙起源解释，但它给我们留下了关于大爆炸之前发生了什么的棘手问题。著名物理学家和数学家、诺奖得主罗杰·彭罗斯提出了一个独特的观点。他在一个视频采访谈话中解释了他的这一非传统观点，以及他为什么认为宇宙的早期状态非常特殊。要认知彭罗斯的这一观点。我们首先必须考虑宇宙微波背景辐射，这种辐射如同宇宙的指纹，为早期宇宙提供了关键的见解。它表明宇宙曾经处于热平衡状态，其特征是最大的随机性或熵。彭罗斯指出 ，But there's something almost paradoxical about this microwave background. It's telling us that the, there was something like the Big Bang there, but it's also telling us because the observations. Of the microwave background, you you can plot the、uh, frequency, you can plot the intensity against each frequency, and you find this wonderful curve. It's the the Planck curve, black body spectrum, and it agrees with that to an extraordinary precision, much better better than you could produce in the lab. And、uh, this is telling us that the very early universe must have been in what's called thermal equilibrium. Now, thermal equilibrium, by definition, is the maximum. Random state. It's the state that the second law tells us we're going to get in the future, if you like. It's it, but there it is in the past. So why is it that the very special state that has to have been there at the beginning, otherwise we don't have a second law. The second law of thermodynamics tells us things get more and more random, and that tells us you go back in time, things get less and less random. So it must be very very special in the initial state. But what we find is that the matter, what we're seeing in this radiation, is Radiation is light, and that's been in equilibrium with matter. So that's what you're looking at, and that's at this maximum random state, maximum entropy state. We say. 然而，彭罗斯指出，从这一发现中产生了一个悖论：如果宇宙自然倾向于不断增加的随机性，那么它为什么会以这样一个平衡状态开始呢？他认为，这种特殊性与引力有关。引力是宇宙中的基本力之一。在早期宇宙中，引力的行为方式非常特殊。通常情况下，引力会导致物质聚集在一起，形成星球和行星等结构。然而，早期宇宙非常均匀，这种均匀性不应该被误解为随机性。当涉及到引力时，均匀性是一种罕见和不寻常的状态。Something special about that was in the gravity.、It's, what you're not looking at is gravity,、mm. and the thing is that the universe was very, very uniform in the early days. And we think of uniform as okay, consistent with being random, if you like. But that's not true when gravity is a principal ingredient, because it tends to clump things together. That's the key thing. Now, so the universe was very special, but it was very special only in the gravity. Somehow gravity wasn't thermalized with everything else, and that's something which needs to be explained. To me, it's it's the greatest puzzle about the Big Bang. Peng Luo Si 批评了现有的理论，包括膨胀模型。该模型提出，宇宙在早期经历了快速膨胀。虽然膨胀可以解释宇宙结构的某些方面，但它未解决早期宇宙为什么如此特殊的根本问题。根据彭罗斯的观点。这些理论不足够，因为他们遵循热力学第二定律。该定律预测时间越来越随机。Now, I don't see most of these theories making any attempt to answer that question. Certainly, the inflationary model doesn't. It only, in a certain sense, makes things worse. And it's, the argument is that it smooths out the universe and things like this. But it doesn't do that unless you're already special, or even more special in the early stages. So if you follow the argument through, you see that it really doesn't explain this initial specialness, and it can't, because it's all consistent with the second law of thermodynamics, which says things get more and more random. So how could they have got more and more special in in the early stages? There has to be something else. 在过去，彭罗斯像许多科学家一样，不屑一顾地拒绝了大爆炸之前存在任何事物的观念，那被认为是一个毫无意义的问题。然而。他后来改变了主意，现在探讨了与宇宙初始状态相关的一个有趣思想。Now, for a long time, if anybody asked me 
what happened before the Big Bang, I would have given the conventional answer, which is the Big Bang was this singular state when all our equations go haywire and time and space you know, doesn't make any sense. Even the question before doesn't mean anything, you see. So that's the conventional answer. You say, you can't talk about it. It's just meaning this question. There is no before. There is no, is no before. Now, I now have changed my mind. I'm not sure it's fair to have changed my mind, but I have another idea which I'm pursuing, <laughs> which I think has a reasonable chance of being right. And this depends upon how you characterize the initial state of the universe. So what I'm saying is that the gravity was special. Uh, everything else seems to have been as random as it could be. Peng Luo Si entered a what he calls a "bad-eye-theory" concept. This is a term used to describe the unique unique space of the universe. The "bad-eye-theory" concept is based on the following basic concepts: the unique space of the universe. 需要了解时空曲率是什么？根据爱因斯坦的广义相对论，物质和能量会弯曲时空，就像放置在一个曲面上的重物会弯曲曲面一样。这种弯曲会影响物体的路径，使其沿着一种被引力弯曲的时空轨迹运动。这就是通常所说的引力。斜变性在相对论中有一种性质叫做斜变性。它意味着物理定律应该在不同的坐标系下具有相同的形式同。这意味着我们可以选择不同的坐标系来描述时空，但物理规律不会改变。邪恶的含义，邪恶，在这里并不是指道德上的邪恶，而是指一种特定的时空曲率性质律。彭罗斯使用这个词汇来描述一种与宇宙早期状态相关的。相当怪异的、令人难以接受的时空弯曲性质。曲率假设，彭罗斯的假设是宇宙在其早期阶段拥有一种特殊的时空曲率，这种曲率与通常的引力场不同力。他认为，这种特殊的曲率性质在宇宙的早期状态中起到关键作用，使宇宙变得特殊和不寻常。延伸。邪恶曲率假设还包括一个概念，即宇宙可以在大爆炸之前延伸。这意味着我们可以想象一个宇宙状态，它不受时间和空间的限制，可以在某种方式下延伸到大爆炸之前，以描述宇宙的早期状态。彭罗斯的同事保罗·托德提供了这一假设的几何解释，表明宇宙可以在大爆炸之前延伸。总之。邪恶曲率假设是彭罗斯用于描述宇宙早期状态的一个概念，它涉及到特殊的时空曲率性质，以及宇宙可以在某种程度上延伸到大爆炸之前的思想。这个假设是他对宇宙起源问题的独特贡献之一。尽管它非常抽象和复杂，但它引发了对宇宙的新方式的思考和研究。Now, can you characterize that in some geometrical way? Well, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, Paul Todd, who the Maths Institute here in Oxford, um, has uh, had a particular way of characterizing this. I mean, I've worried about this for a long time, and I've formulated a thing I call the vile curvature hypothesis. Let's not worry about what that means, mm -hmm. but it's something about the particular type of space-time curvature that could have been present in the early universe. Mm -hmm. Now, my colleague Paul has a way of phrasing that. In a nice geometrical way, which is to say that you could extend the universe to before the Big Bang. Now, this is just a mathematical statement. You're not saying you believe any physics here. <laughs> just saying this mathematical statement. You could extend it before to uh, as long as you're somehow allowed to stretch the universe out. Peng Luo Si uses the Gaussian curvature to describe this extension. Peng Luo Si's theory states. 远期内，宇宙将达到一种状态，其中所有的物质都已经消散，只剩下辐射，没有质量。宇宙失去了测量时间的能力，使空间和时间距离都变得无关紧要。宇宙忘记了自己的大小，使其类似于一个没有时钟的小宇宙。Now there is a universe. I mean, the universe in this picture goes stops at the edge. That's infinity. But you could imagine extending it to the other side. And preserving this kind of geometry, it's called conformal geometry. That's a mathematical term, which means that okay, you you know about shapes, small shapes, but you don't know about sizes. So small and big count as the same, but 
different angles count as different, or different small shapes count as different. So if you don't mind stretching or squashing, then you could step outside this universe to another side to it. Then that is a way of characterizing the initial state of the universe. The universe seems to be like that. It seems to be that the gravitational degrees of freedom are killed off. Mass is what you use if you want to build a clock. You, there, there is a fundamental, there are two fundamental equations in physics that I'm referring to here. One is the famous Planck law, which tells you energy equals um, E equals H nu. So the energy is proportional to frequency. The other is the famous, Einstein, even more famous, Einstein equation, E equals mc squared, which tells you that energy is proportional to mass. So if you put those two together, it says mass and frequency are basically the mm. same thing. Right. So that means that there is a, a clock, which is the frequency, is a measure of mass. Now, if you don't have any mass, or if mass becomes irrelevant, you can't build a clock. So in the early universe, the universe didn't know how to keep time. 尽管这些想法可能看似抽象，但彭罗斯认为他们可以得到观察的支持，尺度不变性的概念已经是膨胀理论的观察支持之一。这一概念可以延伸到这一新模型中。此外，黑洞的残余和它们产生的引力波可能
and it rains on the pond. Every time a drop of water hits the pond, a ripple comes out. Now that's like these black holes colliding and a ripple mm -hmm. goes out of disturbance and gravitational waves. So you get these ripples. After a while, the rain stops. That's when the black holes have all disappeared, pop, you see. Mm -hmm. After a while, the rain stops, but you still see the ripples all me messy. It looks like a, just a mess, you see. But in principle, you should be able to work out that these ripples are made up out of individual places where the raindrops have hit. In the same way, I'd say, you can look at this background radiation and there's now a lot of information from these new satellites and so on, which have been observing the very detailed structure of this background radiation. Um, you should be able to analyze it and see whether it's made up out of these Individual events which are spread out in this way. Luo Jie Peng Luo Si, 对大爆炸之前发生了什么的探讨，挑战了传统观念。他的非传统理论认为，早期宇宙之所以特殊，是因为引力的行为方式非常独特。虽然我们可能会觉得我们的宇宙之前存在另一个宇宙的想法有些大胆，但它为我们提供了对宇宙起源之谜的新视角。无论彭罗斯的理论是否成立，他都鼓励我们不断拓展对宇宙的认知边界。